All right, what's up, Dart people? We're back in the Dart language tour in the classes section on instance variables. Okay, so classes have members, which is just a fancy way of saying you can have uh, different things in your class, okay? Like what a class is made up of. And remember, a class is kind of just like a, a blueprint to make uh, instances of a, uh, a widget or an object or whatever. Um, instance variables um, represent the properties for each instance, okay? Um, yeah. And here is how you declare instance variables. All right, so now we are declaring, we're creating our own class called point. Okay. Um, usually point you get from the Dart math library, but this is one that we're creating. Um, so they're calling this with a double with a question mark there, x. Uh, it declares the instance variable x. It is initially null. So it's kind of like saying that, okay? But you get sort of, it says don't explicitly initialize variables to no, to null. Uh, so this is more of an implicit initialization, if you will. Uh, this one, y, is the same as x, okay? We're declaring it, it's initially null. Um, now this one, for example, doesn't have a question mark. Uh, it's z and the initial value is zero, okay? So if we have uh, the entry point to our program, main, and we say variable, let's just um, lowercase p point, it's just the name of the variable, uh, we're going to create an instance of our point class, okay? Uh, sometimes you might see something like point one, and then have point two, okay? So these are two different variables that represent instances of this point cl uh, class. For example, this point class is like a, a blueprint for uh, an assembly line or like a, um, you know, a factory where you're making things. Well, point one and point two represent independent toys or widgets, whatever's being coming, you know, on that uh, conveyor belt in the, in, in the factory. They're two separate things, okay? But they came from the same class or blueprint called point. Um, and this is how you create a new one. Okay. So we could print, for example, point one. Um, if we said like dot x, it's going to be null. It's there, it's a property, but when we, when we access it like this, we get the value, okay? This sort of dot x is we're getting the value. Um, we can also do point one dot y. It should be the same as x because they were declared the same way. Um, they're both instance variables and they're both initially null. Uh, we can also print um, oops, point one dot z uh, and that should return zero uh, because it's already been declared here. Uh, this class doesn't have a constructor in it. Um, so when we actually call this um, construction here, or maybe even before, I'm not sure how, how the program runs. There's some verbiage about that. Um, this, this instance variable is, is already set. Okay, so we should have null, null, and then zero. Okay, just like that. If we wanted to say 0.2.x equals five, okay, then we could do something like all of these guys. Okay, except let's format and then change this one to a two. Can we do this? Yes, we can. Okay, so then null, null, zero, but then I've reassigned x for point two. So what I'm showing is that we are also able to set um, the value. So uh, bum, 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 bum. this is um, when we're calling print point dot x, that's getting the value here we're setting the value to five um, and we're not printing it because it, it just sets it. It doesn't really return the value that I know of. Okay, so then the bottom should be X, uh, five, null, and zero, just like this. Okay, so that is a quick introduction to instance variables. That's how we declare them. Um, this is how you initialize it. Um, 
the docs say that all uninitialized instance variables have the value null. Okay, we saw that it's uninitialized, meaning there is no equal sign between the time we declare it and the time that you know the statement or the expression ends on the line. Okay. All instance variables generate an implicit getter method. Okay, um, there's a getters and setters section over in methods that we'll get to in a couple days. Uh, but just know for now that you get this implicit getter method. Um, and, we, and we saw that, right? All instance variables generate implicit getter. So just by declaring these instance variables, whether they're initialized or not, we're able to say instance dot instance variable instance dot you know that variable instance dot that one uh, and return the values that's what we mean by getting that's a getter a getter method is kind of like under the hood it's it's already defined for us let me show you something in in ruby uh, so this is the uh, the world that I live in most of the time we yeah let's just use point so we have uh, a similar uh, let me just put it side by side so we can see it. So we also have a class keyword um, in Ruby, but we don't. We just have an end to say that that caps off the class. Um, so we don't actually use the opening curly braces um, like Dart does. Now, if I wanted to create a point, I would just say point equals. Um, Point dot new. Actually, we don't we don't do any of that. <laughs> I think that's enough. I'm getting my my Ruby and my Dart mixed up in my mind. Okay, and then I just want to print the point. Uh, let me see if I can run this this scratch file I've got going on. Okay, so this is this is object notation. Uh, somewhere in memory, it created this point object. Okay, I didn't need a constructor uh, method. I didn't need to set any instance variables. It's just like this hollowed out class. Okay, it's the most basic kind of class we can have. Now, if I wanted to declare something similar like x up here, this double thing, okay, what I might do is say um, x like this. You zoom out so you can see all of that. Um, let me also go up to line one, bring it up here, and bring this down. Give ourselves some more space. Okay, so this is this is a getter method. Um, there's this special way in, um, in in Ruby where even without a setter method, I can say instance variable set. Um, and what does that do? That takes X, right? And doesn't that take a value? I am X. I think that's how that works. So if I run this again, I should be able to see it in the object notation. No, X is not allowed as an instance variable name. What does it take? Several variants. Takes a symbol, no, that's defined. Um, instance variable set, symbol, string, and an object. It does not have to. Maybe it's at x. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, I thought I would just get that for free like that, but I guess, yeah, so this isn't used very often um, in Ruby. Uh, but it is possible, uh, even without a, um, a setter method, you kind of get these, these ways to get and set after the fact. Um, so I could also say point dot x, okay? And that's gonna call that method x right there, and it's gonna return this instance variable that we see down here in this object notation. 
So if I print that, uh, instead of getting the object notation, now we're just gonna get IMX. Hmm. Okay, just like that. Now, um, usually whenever you, um, you have to have a constructor. Okay, um, this point in Dart, we don't have a constructor. Um, eventually we'll get to constructors, but um, so if this was Dart, I would say point like that, and that would be my constructor, right? Um, and in Ruby, we have this special keyword called initialize, and it can take, um, let's say it takes a parameter called x, and we're gonna assign this value, this instance variable x, we're gonna assign it x um, when we create it. So if we say new point, and let's give it a value of like seven, okay? Um, Ruby mine is just telling me what that variable is called. Um, now we don't have to set this instant variable, instance variable like that. Uh, instead, uh, we're setting it whenever we initialize it. Okay, so this is actually where it's getting set at the point of initialization um, or instantiate. Um, yeah, it's it's being initialized when the when the um, the instance instance is instantiated okay <laughs> all right um, so if we print the point we'll see the object notation we'll see that x is equal to seven in this instance uh, run okay, I'm gonna do command uh, control R okay so there's our object notation there's that if I wanted to reassign it, um, so before I print the value, maybe I want to say point.x equals 10, actually. Um, and I try to run this. What you'll notice is that um, Ruby thinks there's actually a method called x equals. Okay? That this is actually a method similar to saying something like point dot. Um, do something right like that could be a method equals <laughs> okay um, and in fact that's exactly what a setter is in Ruby so I could say def x equals um, and then say at x equals this thing so it takes a parameter um, let's just call it x like so um, and I will zoom out just a smidge so we can see what we're doing still Okay, so uh, earlier there are undefined method. So basically we didn't have a setter. The only time we could set, it was like set it and forget it, was whenever we initialized. Um, but now if I want to, on the fly, after I initialize it, you know, reset the value, um, I have to have basically what looks like this. Uh, this method, x equals, that takes a parameter. That's all that is. Okay, so whenever we have and I'll run it just to show you that it works. Okay, so there's our object notation, uh, instance variable x equals 10. Um, so this is really just syntactic sugar to say that um, point dot x equals 10, that, that we're setting that, that value. Okay, now imagine if I had 15 different properties for a point, okay? Um, like magnitude and all that jazz that like Dart has for its point. This would this would take up a lot of like just regular boilerplate code. They would get really gross after a while. Um, so what what Ruby has is, are these convenience methods. So instead of saying uh, def x like that for a reader, I can define an attribute reader or add a reader, and then just say x like that, and that takes care of that. Okay, um, for a setter method like that, there's a um, uh, another one called what is it? Adder writer. Okay, and now I have a writer. Okay, so I can do both of these things. So now I'm still newing it up with um, a value. I'm resetting it, and then you know, just to show that we're actually getting uh, the value with a getter or reader attribute reader. Uh, I'll print point dot x. Okay, so there's 10. Now it's so common to be able to read and write uh, that we actually have a thing called a 
ladder accessor and that takes care of that as well. Okay, so now we can read and write to our heart's content. Um, and, and this is a beautiful thing, okay? Um, so similar to how in Dart, whenever you, you're just declaring and initializing uh, these instance variables, you get the, the getter and the setter for free. Um, what did it say? All instance variables generate an implicit getter method. Um, uh, it goes on to say non-final instance variables and late final. Okay, ours are non-final. Okay, we didn't throw in a keyword final like that, right? Okay, and automatically it um, shows us a, an error. In fact, so what we're dealing with is non-final instance variables, uh, late final also instance variables without initializers also generate implicit or setter method. So this is really nice in, in Ruby, for example, when I can just say add or accessor and list the thing and then I can read and write. Maybe in special cases I break it out um, where I only want to write or only want to read. Um, so it's, it's, it's a bit of syntactic sugar. So this is kind of how I compare Ruby to Dart uh, where you have an add or accessor and then you have these instance variables in Dart where you get the getter and setter for free. Okay, um, right, so I wanted to show you that to compare and contrast. Uh, we will get into getters and setters um, in more detail in the methods section under classes, and that will be its own video. Okay, if you initialize a non-late instance variable where it's declared, so just like Z, we have initialized it to a value where it's declared. It's declared right here. The value is set when the instance is created, which is before the constructor and its initializer list execute. Okay. Um, so just like I had in the Ruby example, where whenever we are initializing, um, like here I was passing in X, but if I didn't want to do that, um, and I wanted to do something similar to Z over here in Dart, I would say, well, I don't want to initialize, I don't want to even have my constructor yet. Um, I just want to have um, an adder uh, accessor called X. Um, so why don't we create a new point and then uh, X will be nothing in the beginning. <clears throat> X will be nil. So in, in fact, if I say, Point dot x at this point in time, um, I haven't set it to anything, so I'm expecting it to return nil. And then I'm going to set it to x, which I can do because setting is part of adder accessor. And then I'm going to print uh, the value of x or read it. Um, and I also get that because I've defined this as an adder accessor. So let me run this real quick. Okay, um, right. And so point dot x at this point is nil. And then I set it to 10 and print it to 10, and of course it returns 10. Um, right, so this is this is more equivalent to this this Z here. Well, actually, they're they're setting it to zero. Um, is that what they're doing? Yeah, the value is set before. Um, so in fact, if I wanted to do this in Ruby, I would I think I have to define this thing and say. No, that would also be like when it's created. Hmm. Yeah, so Ruby's a little bit different in the sense that like when I'm initializing the thing, yeah, what I'd have to do is, is something like this. Or I could just, just do this. How about that? It doesn't even take a, a thing. Okay, so now when I initialize it, x is equal to 5. Okay, so when I print this the first go round, it'll be five. I'll reassign it to 10 and print 10. Okay. There we go, five and 10. Um, yeah, so let's focus back in Dart. So we just did some compare and contrast with Ruby. 
um, going back to Dart, the value is set when the instance is created. So the this is something I'm still wrapping my mind around. The instance of the object, like that, that widget came out of the factory on that conveyor belt, that instance is created before the constructor and its initializer execute, which in my mind is a little counterintuitive um, because in order to have an instance, we, we need to construct um, <laughs> We need to construct the class, you know, the instance from the class uh, instructions. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit hard to understand, uh, but the way I understand it, or I'm trying to understand it, is, um, is similar to the Ruby example. Um, yeah, I don't even know if that's a good analogy, but um, yeah. It's like the only time you actually get this. Maybe, maybe there's this nuance about you know when it's compiled. Like maybe when it's compiled, we like we're we know that this is going to be zero. So this thing is going to be set even before we construct the instance. Um, yeah, let's not get too hung up on that. Okay, um, so here is an example. Let's go ahead and run through this. It should be pretty much the same. We have x and y, they're both null. Uh, we have a point variable that refers to a new point. Uh, we have our setter for free. Um, so the setter, because this is a non-late instance variable, um, that's what it's saying, use the setter method for x. Uh, remember, you can assert here, but we can certainly print. Um, and then we're just saying, hey, did that setter work? And we didn't use a setter after the fact on y, and it's initially null. That's all we're showing here. So we could sure get true on both of these. Yeah, and we do. Okay, instance variables can be final, in which case they must be set exactly once. Okay, um, this is the, this is different from a const. Um, I have a whole video on you know the difference between final and const. Uh, from final and const right there and believe it or not I've actually already forgot what I did there uh, but what I know is that uh, it's not a const here so it's not going to execute this datetime dot now um, at compilation time uh, at runtime it will figure this out and, and set it and so it kind of behaves a little bit like a const, I guess, like a constant in the, the more English sense of the term, like just the way we understand it every day. Okay, they're set exactly once. Uh, initialize final non-late instance variables at declaration using a construction, a constructor parameter, or utilize or using a constructor's initializer list. All right, there are three ways to do it, is what they're saying. Let's pull this class in here called profile mark. Okay. Um, is that going to give us? I thought that would give us a problem. Okay. Now it's a problem. Okay. All right. Ah, I see why now. All right, we have this new class called profile mark. We have two instance variables called name and start. Um, this, this name can be, um, remember right now it's kind of like null, right? Uh, but we've said that uh, it's, it's final. So that means like when we construct the, uh, the instance, we actually, I think, want to set the name at that time. And the way we do that is through this constructor here. Remember, you can have um, different signatures, different um, constructor signatures for a class. Um, and this is how we do that. So if you actually wanted to, let's get rid of this and our point class here. If we wanted to create a profile mark, um, let's do that, profile mark, and say equals profile mark which one do we want to use well we could use the unnamed one or we could use uh, the, the, the this first one okay which takes a positional 
um, thing. Now, if, if we just did this without passing it a parameter, we get an error. Okay, one positional argument expected but zero found. Okay, so we have to add a name. It has to be a string. Uh, so this is when, when we're running it right here. This this is the um, the final countdown, if you will, or the final version. Um, so let's just call it um, Timurlu, something like that. Okay. Um, right. The other thing is um, we've got ourselves, for example, uh, we can do this. So like profile mark, this instance of profile mark, it has access to uh, start. Okay, so if we print that, it's going to print datetime.now. Not when I typed it, but when I actually hit run. <laughs> okay, 13.57, it just went to 14. Okay, 14.02. Each time I run it, it's, it's updating, see? Um, okay, so that's, that's this thing getting set. Um, I think, let me just play around real quick. No, can't do that. That'd be weird. Okay, um, let's do another one. Uh, let's call it another mark, and it is going to be equal to profile mark. Except now, instead of using this first constructor signature, let's do the unnamed one with two ends. Okay, and it can either take nothing. It looks like if it does take nothing, then the name I believe will be set to an empty string. Okay, so if we print another mark, uh, dot name, I think it'll be, yeah, I'm right. <laughs> An empty string, there's nothing there. Uh, let's change this to something else, uh, ASDF. Now, this is, our, this is our sort of like, our default, our backup. So that name should be ASDF, I think. And it only turns out that way because we called this uh, constructor signature and didn't pass in an argument. Um, in fact, it doesn't take an argument. So it kind of has to fall back to this thing, okay? Um, and that's why it was an empty string and it's called unnamed, right? That makes sense. So you kind of want to force somewhere in your program to have an unnamed profile mark where the name is in an empty string um, instead of assigning it here okay uh, and then you get issues where you can't initialize like this it says name is final and it was given a value when it was declared so it can't be set to a new value so all of a sudden you can't do that so that's why it's like well oh, bummer all right do we do that how do we actually get an unnamed version um, you know, I guess you could just do that, right? <laughs> so now that one's going to be an empty string. This one's going to be an empty string. We should get two empty strings. Yeah. Maybe it's a little bit of a contrived example, but you can do that. Okay, the take home message here is that the final things are set exactly once. Um, we set the final non-late instance variable at declaration, okay? At declaration, that's the the, uh, the start time. We're using a constructor parameter, okay? That's this. Um, but then also using a constructor's initializer list, which is what this was on the right side of this colon. Okay, that's what we're showing there. Uh, if you need to assign a value um, assign the value of a final instance variable after the constructor body starts, you can use one of the following. So the value of a final after the constructor body starts. Um, yeah, don't know exactly what that means. Uh, I'd have to see an example. Uh, but I would imagine there are cases where you need to do just that. Uh, you can use one of the following, a factory constructor, which is later down here somewhere. Okay. Mm. Mm. 
excuse me. Yeah, so there's a factory constructor. I haven't used these yet myself. Or you can use late final. Um, it says, but be careful, late final without an initializer adds a setter to the API. Okay, um, we're gonna worry about factory constructors when we get to the constructor section on its own. Uh, but late final is is something that we could we could look at. If you need to assign a value, it, sorry, if you need to assign the value of a final instance variable after the constructor body starts, you can use one of the following. Um, it adds a setter, okay. So like late final um, thing equals hello. Can I do that? Okay. Okay, so it prints hello. Remember, these were both unnamed in that sense. It said, be careful though, because it adds a setter to the API. So really, I could say profile mark that thing equals something else. Thing can be used as a setter because it's final. Try finding a different setter or making thing non-final. Okay. Well, then I don't know what that means. A late final without an initializer adds a setter. Is Does that mean without this initializer? Ah, okay. So I have uninitialized the declaration up here and I'm saying thing is going to have a value. So I think this is about null safety. Thing is going to have a value if and when we need to use it sometime else in our sometime later in our program, which happens to be right here, or actually right here when we're printing it. Um, because we haven't given it a value, and it's not in any of our constructors, um, we get this setter as well. Okay. Um, right. So if you try to set name, you get an error. Um, but if it's late final, you can um, you can have a setter and set it to something. Uh, okay, so we were talking about late variables, and I wanted to show and, and remind myself that late this modifier is is a pretty recent addition to Dart. Okay, so we declare a non-nullable variable that's initialized after declaration. Um, Right, we're saying whatever is defined as late, it's non-nullable, it can never be null, um, and it's initialized after declaration. Something that's initialized at declaration um, would say, you know, late final or final type variable name equals something. Okay, it's another way to lazily initialize a variable. Sometimes you want to lazily do something because the assignment or initializing of the variable um, can be a very expensive operation. Okay. Right. Okay, and, and one of the reasons is to reassure the uh, Dart analyzer that the, the value at the t time you use it, that there will actually be something there, uh, but you're saying, Hold your horses. Don't don't be so strict. Uh, just trust me that this value will be here later. Okay. Um, that's how we get it. Cool. Yeah. Okay. What else do we have in instance variables? I think that was it. Um, so again, we have instance variables. We have ins uh, getters and setters that we get for free for some of these declarations and um, for some of these declarations. And uh, getters and setters, more generally, there will be a section on that in, um, I believe, the methods section in a couple videos. Okay. And 
I also showed y'all a little bit of Ruby um, and compared and contrast Ruby to Dart. So that was a lot of fun. Okay, yeah, and we skipped factory constructors because you're gonna get that in the constructor section by itself. All right, well, thanks for spending some time with me. See you next time.